In the Ontario Hockey League, there are a few teams that seem to be competitive almost yearly, while others, usually around the middle of the pack, and you see in their cycle, they'll compete once every four years or so. And then there's other teams that just have a hard time putting things together to go on a deep playoff run. And the Kingston Frontenacs, they're one of those teams. And for Kingston, they're a very interesting franchise. They're a team that's had limited success in the Ontario Hockey League. They last finished first in the East Division back in 2016. And before that, their last division title was in 1995. So just two division titles uh, since that season. And playoff success has also been far and few between for the Frontenacs. They've never made it to an OHL final, which I was a little surprised about. Uh, they've only appeared in one Eastern Conference final over the last 24 years. That was in 2018, where they lost to the Hamilton Bulldogs. So when the team bid to host the Memorial Cup this year, there was some excitement around this Kingston Frontenacs team, because usually if you're going to put in a bid, you're expected to be a team that's going to challenge for top spot in the league. And for the Kingston Frontenacs, they had that excitement going into 2023-24, but it didn't really last too long. Uh, they were one of the five teams at the start of the regular season to make a coaching change. Luca Caputi, he was let go. In comes Troy Mann. And the team had some success, and they also were a little aggressive in the trade market. They brought in Jakub Kromiak from the Sudbury Wolves. They brought in Jax Dubois from the Peterborough Peets, Roman Schmidt from Kitchener. But they still ended up seventh in the Eastern Conference standing. So as much as this team would put on a streak of wins, then they would also put on a streak of losses, kind of similar to what we saw at the Owen Sound attack this season. They would, of course, go into the playoffs, face a very tough North Bay Battalion team, and uh, end up being knocked out in five games. So I was kind of expecting a little more from the Kingston Frontenacs going into the playoffs, but uh, they did give everything they could to North Bay, and just wasn't enough this year. So it's just a lot of inconsistencies with this team. It kind of left you wanting more with the talent that this group had put together. Let's go over the top scorers from the season. We'll look at the top 10 scorers for the Frontenacs. Paul Ludwinski, he led the way, 23 goals, 46 assists, good for 69 points. Then he had Jacob Battaglia, 31 goals, 34 assists, 65 points. Christopher Thibodeau, 21 goals, 39 assists, good for 60 points. Matthew Soto, 25 goals, 31 assists, 56 points. Jax Dubois, who they picked up at the deadline from Peterborough, he ended the season with 24 goals, 30 assists, good for 54 points. Linus Hemstrom, he was fun to watch this season, 23 goals, 30 assists, Good for 53 points. And then you had Ethan Medima, 18 goals, 23 assists, good for 41 points. And then Quentin Burns, 10th uh, in scoring. Uh, actually, no, he wasn't 10th in scoring. He had six goals, 29 assists, 35 points. He was actually 8th in scoring for Kingston. Uh, Luke McNamara, who they got from Saginaw during the regular season, he put up 10 goals, 24 assists, 34 points. And then Gabriel Frasca rounds up the top 10 with 15 goals, 17 assists, 32 points. The other interesting note was the goaltending. Mason Vakari, he was putting in the miles this year as he took a lot of rubber in net. He had a record of 27, 27, and 3, a 3.55 goals against average and an 880 save percentage. And then his backup rookie goaltender, JJ Selico, he had a 5-3 and 1 record, 4.57 goals against, and an 833 save percentage. So uh, the rookie netminder not seeing a lot of action this season. And I kind of wonder if Kingston maybe overplayed Vakari this season. He appeared in 59 of the 68 games during the regular season. I was also surprised at the OHL trade deadline. We did the live stream, and I commented saying, I wouldn't be surprised to see Kingston maybe add a backup goaltender. Nate Krawchuk of the Sudbury Wolves wasn't playing at the time, so it seemed like a natural fit, but they never made that move. They decided to sit with the two goaltenders that they had. So I was... I figured Kingston was going to make maybe a push for a goalie because this team looked like they were on the up and up at that point. They put in a few wins. They had big wins also against Ottawa, but still uh, just not so much to be desired. Also injuries were a factor this season for Kingston. Gabriel Frasca, he missed a lot of time, only appearing in 44 games. So also the inconsistency of the lineup. I know Linus uh, Hemstrom suffered an injury early in the season and Players were in and out of the lineup, which makes things difficult when you want that consistency and to build that chemistry. But it just, things were, something was missing with this Kingston Frontenacs team. Uh, overagers that are graduating this season, Jax Dubois, Jacob Holmes, and Roman Schmidt. Uh, so those are some big names that won't be returning next year. And then your overage candidates for next season, that includes Gage Hayes, Paul Ludwinski, who is a Chicago Blackhawks draft pick. So we'll see if he returns next season for an overage year. 
Uh, then you have Nathan Poole and Linus Hemstrom, who is also an import. So there is the potential for the Frontenacs to maybe add an overager during the regulars or during the offseason, or they wait until the start of next season to see what overagers may become available. Uh, they also did that last year. Remember, they picked up Tyler Savard from the Barry Colts. That was just before the regular season. And of course, Savard wasn't quite the fit with Kingston. He ended up leaving and playing with the Caledonia Corvairs in the GOGHL. So for Kingston, this is a team that I think you, you kind of think they'd be better than what they put on the ice. I don't know if it's uh, systems or if it's something to do in the dressing room, but it just, I don't know what, I can't really put my finger on it. Uh, what's going on with the Kingston Frontenacs at the draft. They also made a very bold selection. They had the eighth overall pick and they went with Caleb Malhotra. Malhotra, he is a very special talent. He is going to go places. However, there's no guarantee that he reports to the Kingston Frontenacs. He's got other options outside of the Ontario Hockey League. And I know the teams were a little afraid to pick him in the top five where we thought maybe he should go. Uh, but uh, we still don't know if uh, Malhotra will report to the Kingston Frontenacs or not. Or do they look to trade him? Because we've seen that in the past where top draft picks, they end up getting traded. So then you get you know, picks in return and then that uh, pick for the following draft. It's kind of similar to what... Kingston did with Max Domi. That was back in 2011. They traded Domi to the London Knights, which also happened to be uh, Kingston's eighth overall pick from that year. So is history repeating itself uh, with the Kingston Frontenacs? I'm not saying Malhotra will end up with the London Knights, but he could end up with a, another team that's looking to contend next season. So we'll have to wait and see because his, his dad actually played for the Guelph Storm. So does Malhotra get traded to Guelph? Time will tell. But either way... Um, I also like their pick they did in the second round. They brought in Nolan Butter from uh, uh, Peterborough. He is a solid forward going forward. So uh, last season with Peterborough, 16 goals, 40 points in 35 games. I do like that pick up in the second round. He also had two goals and four assists at the OHL Cup. So this is a front next team. I don't think they're going to challenge for the top spot in the East Division next season. The Oshawa Generals look to have a, a solid group returning next year. But I'm, I'm figuring Kingston will probably be middle of the pack. They should make the playoffs. Do they challenge for home ice? So maybe they'll end up in that fourth seed or the fifth. Somewhere there, I think, in the middle is where Kingston stands at this point based on their roster. So that's how I see things from the booth. Let me know your thoughts down below on the Kingston Frontenacs. Thank you very much for your support and tuning in. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And we'll talk to you again soon.